Hey everybody, I'm the Drink Pro. Is good times too good to be true? What's up everybody, Kyle the Drink Pro here with you yet again. Thank you for joining me so much today. This is a unique episode. I usually try to focus a lot more on the tasting and the history of whiskey. This one is a little bit different because I have heard some really interesting and potentially damning rumors about Good Times. If you aren't familiar, Good Times is a brand that relatively recent to the scene, they focused on finishing products that they are purchasing, not distilling. They are a non-distilling producer. Matter of fact, the only way I was able to find information about the label itself was to go to their Instagram page and then follow a link to something called Barrel Station. Now, I'm not sure what Barrel Station is or who owns it, but I know that you can buy whiskey directly from their site, along with many other products. One of the things I noticed is they had flavored whiskeys that were very cheap, all the way up to very expensive products. So I'm assuming it's a national distributor. That actually sort of brings me to the rumors that I've heard about good times. If you look online, especially in the Facebook secondary market or with whiskey influencers on Instagram or YouTube, you'll see a lot of good times products and a lot of them with very interesting finishes. I believe I've seen peach, blackberry, watermelon, vanilla, cocoa, flavors you wouldn't expect to see whiskeys in. Now, all of the labels explain that they're using watermelon brandy, peach brandy, etc., etc. And then with the vanilla, it says vanilla bourbon and I think cacao bourbon for the chocolate. I'm not sure what those products are exactly, and it kind of sounds suspicious because you would expect other companies who are trying to expand the horizon of flavoring whiskeys with finishing in unique barrels would have already jumped onto this trend, but Good Times is the first one I've seen doing it. Now, I won't disclose who sent me this information, but I have heard from people who have worked with Good Times in the past that some of their whiskey is not actually being finished the way it's stated on the label, and they are in fact flavoring their whiskey. I don't know if that's true or not. I have no experience with Good Times, but what I'm hoping to do today is taste some of their products and decide for myself if I think it's flavored purely based on the taste. But I wanna take a step back for a second because I know that's sort of a sensational headline. I don't wanna make this too clickbaity. One of the things that I was a little bit concerned about when I did some digging is the lack of transparency of this company. If you've watched my videos, you know that I am harping on transparency again and again and again. I have heard that if you wanted to look at or examine the barrels that are used for finishing, you were not able to do that. I also know that when I looked into the website and I looked into the companies behind these products, they're actually not really affiliated with the Good Times name. That's not the name of the company. The name of the company is Whiskey Thief Distilling. Now, Whiskey Thief Distilling Company is actually related to another company called Three Boys Farms. On the Kentucky Secretary of State website, these two companies are registered to the same address and they appear to be the same operation. If they are distinct, I wasn't able to see it without visiting their location. The Three Boys Farm Distilling Company has a website and they talk about being a distillery and they talk about making distillate for 10 years. But like I said, Whiskey Thief is a non-distilling producer. Then when I look again at the Three Boys Farm website, I don't see any mention of their products. I don't see any discussion of their process. They say they're distilling whiskey. I don't see anything about it. What I see is a company that is a non-distilling producer. That's what's coming out into the marketplace with good times. Now I believe these companies were formed by Ross and Heather Caldwell but they have since changed hands or those people have stepped into a different role. A man by the name of Walter Zouch, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is now the president of Whiskey Thief. So I invite any of those people I've just named to come speak with me on a live stream or in a future video so I can clear the air about this. I want people to know what's happening with Good Times, what's happening with Whiskey Thief, and what's happening with Three Boys Farms. I kind of hope I'm wrong. One other thing I will add, Three Boys Farms is a licensed Kentucky distiller. So they have the license to distill. Whether or not that's being put into products that are available on the market, I couldn't tell from their website and I haven't seen in person. Okay, so let's run down the line of whiskeys I've got here today. I'm going to try to be quick about the whiskeys that are not from Good Times because I've done a couple of comparisons here. The first comparison is between two different corn whiskeys. One of them is a six-year-old corn whiskey that's about 80-20 corn to barley. The other one is an eight and a half year, 99 or 95% corn whiskey. I don't remember off the top of my head, but shout out to Mike for providing me with these samples 
examples of good times. To me, this is essentially a comparison to make sure that what they're saying makes sense. The corn whiskey that's eight and a half years tastes older. I know what MGP whiskey tastes like. I believe this says it was distilled in Indiana, so it's almost certainly MGP corn whiskey. Let's dig into that now. The first one here I'm gonna taste is the six year, 80-20. We're gonna nose them side by side first. I'm actually getting a lot of brown sugar on this. Like I said, it is six years old. It does have a corn quality, but the barley's showing up for sure. Unlike something like a mellow corn, we're gonna get a lot of candy corn, caramel corn, things like that. This, uh, this nose is a lot more corn syrup, and then it's added in addition to a little bit more oaky, baking spice notes on the nose. Now, if we smell the good times, this is the eight and a half year which is labeled good old times. Wow, that is very sharp. There is a proof difference between these two. The 80-20 corn whiskey, like I said, it's six year, but it's also 50% alcohol. The good times is 58%. That difference is very prominent. I get a lot more sharp corn liquor nose. Uh, I also say there's not nearly as much baking spice on this, but this, the more I stir it, is becoming more and more like the first one. I think that heat is really showing up. Yeah, and now I'm getting more like corn husk from that uh, that first whiskey. And this one's still giving me a lot of sweet caramel. The candy corn is really prominent on this eight and a half year. That just has a really classic bourbon profile. Sweet, a little bit of baking spice. Definitely more corn, more sweetness than you'd expect from a standard bourbon but uh, it drinks a little bit more like a bourbon than a corn liquor. I'm not gonna go too deep in the notes on my controls. I really wanna focus on the notes on the good times. Oh yeah. Yeah, now that is definitely something in the eight, nine, 10 year range. You can tell because the oak is very prominent. That distillate quality that I got a little bit of on the nose isn't there at all on the palate. You get some sharpness, but it's definitely heat from alcohol and not youth. Not brightness, sharpness. They're a little bit different. The corn shows up a lot on the front of the palate, but it's very earthy in the middle. You get this sort of sweet corn, corn husk, immediately into this very earthy quality. And the oak becomes very prominent mid-palate into the finish. It's not bitter, but it is very prominent. It's very earthy, deep, rich tones. I don't, it's not my favorite because it doesn't have a lot of sort of mid-palate uh, uniqueness. It doesn't have a lot of fruitiness. It's actually not very sweet, honestly, for a corn whiskey. You'd expect them to be a lot sweeter. And then you almost get some of that bitter oak at the very finish. And there's also some black pepper to round out the profile. So I'm pretty confident that this is in fact what it's labeled. It's an eight and a half year old corn whiskey. Nothing about this seems off. Nothing about this seems mislabeled. I think the proof difference and the age difference are clear, both on the nose and the palate between the six year 80-20 corn whiskey and the eight and a half year 95-5-99-1 corn whiskey. What is really interesting to me though is I like the younger one better in this situation because it's got more of this mid palate. This profile is something I know people prefer, but it's not my preferred profile. All right, let's move these out of the way and get to this bad boy. This one is very interesting and confusing to me. This whiskey is Indiana distillate and it's been finished in bourbon vanilla barrels. I have no idea what a bourbon vanilla barrel is. That sounds suspicious and weird to me. I can believe something like apple brandy, peach brandy, pear brandy, even watermelon brandy, which is weird, but I looked it up, I know it exists. Still strikes me as odd, but this, the vanillas and the chocolates are really odd to me. That is something I've never heard of anybody doing before, and maybe they're being very innovative. As you know, people who are innovative are often the subject of a lot of skepticism, so maybe I am just the old fuddy-duddy being skeptical, but let's taste it and see how much of that vanilla comes through. So after those two corn whiskeys, I gotta say there is vanilla on the nose, but it's pretty, it's pretty muted. I mean, this basically smells like MGP bourbon, which is what it is. It's distilled in Indiana, almost certainly MGP bourbon. On the nose, I do get vanilla bean, maybe a little bit of green apple, and some toasted marshmallow. This is sweeter than most MGP for me on the nose. 
specifically their bourbons. I never get particular sweetness on the nose of an MGP bourbon. And that could be finishing, that could be something else. I'm mainly getting fruitier notes, maybe a little bit of lemon in there along with that apple quality, maybe like a macadamia nut cookie. There's a little bit of that sugariness and that breadiness that's very subtle. Macadamia nuts are a little more prominent, so maybe something like that in there. Very sweet and sugar forward and fruit forward actually on the nose. So let's give it a taste. Now that tastes like vanilla extract. Very, very vanilla forward. That's kind of all I taste, to be honest with you. I can taste the alcohol. This is 58% alcohol, but it basically just tastes like vanilla. I mean, there's sweetness up front, interesting oakiness in the mid palate, but all of it sort of coated with this vanilla quality. This, I mean, of all the whiskeys that I'm gonna try today, I've had most of them before. This one really is the one that makes me skeptical. Part of it's because I've not had hardly any finished whiskey where the finish flavor was pervasive throughout the pour. Usually the finish comes and goes. It has some effect, but not continuously throughout the pour. If you have a sherry finish, a port finish, you get those notes, but they dissipate or they show up later. I've never had something where one specific note just permeates the entire pour. And that's what's happening here with this vanilla finish. Now I'm absolutely certain that this is MGP distillate because MGP has a very specific profile. Their tastes are very familiar to me. I've had a shitload of MGP whiskey. This is MGP, I'm certain of that. What is done to make a bourbon vanilla barrel that is then used to make this finish and make that vanilla so prominent? Big question mark for me. The answer that I've heard from people who have engaged with this process is, that it's essentially a bourbon barrel that was used to age vanilla beans in or some sort of vanilla powder or something, and then was again used as a finishing barrel. That's very possible. I've never heard of anything like that. It's very possible. But this is just, it's so prominent, it's so pervasive, it's so singular that it, it, it's, it, it makes it hard for me to believe. You know, I, I love being proven wrong and I hope the people from Good Times will come prove me wrong, but if I had to put money on it, if I had to bet, I would bet that this was not um, some sort of barrel finish. I also heard that they don't finish very long, and I think that's supported by how quickly these picks are coming out. When you have a short finish, even if the barrel's sopping wet, it shouldn't be this prominent on the profile. So my skepticism remains with this vanilla whiskey, but we're gonna move to what I think is actually the most interesting situation now. Last but not least, is their cigar batch, which I have right here. Now, this is the only good times I have an entire bottle of. And so I've got some more details on this. This says it's a 51% MGP rye. It was aged for five years and five months, and it was finished in Armagnac and Cognac barrels. Now, the person I bought this from, I believe they said it was between six and nine months on Cognac and three to six months on Armagnac. Ooh, I'm gonna spill there. So what I've got here is a cognac finished rye from MGP, and I'm gonna be comparing it to this Good Times cigar blend. And we'll see how it goes. So first we're gonna smell um, what I know to be a cognac finish. The cognac is noticeable on the nose. It adds a distinct sweetness and a grapiness. If you've had cognac before, the sweetness definitely shows up on the nose of this and some of that grapiness. I think what you really don't get is the alcohol burn, which is interesting because I find an alcoholic quality to cognacs, especially when they're higher proof cognacs, that I'm not getting any of here. Now this is still 60% alcohol according to the label. So, you know, this is gonna be something very, very similar to this on paper in terms of proof point, but it feels a lot lower proof. Now let's move to the cigar blend. So definitely younger distillate, but that's not surprising. I don't think this is four and a half year. The grapes are definitely showing up. But again, this is sweeter. It's got a syrupy quality. And that's something I'm noticing on both of these finished products is this syrupy quality. You know, the initial vanilla was very vanilla forward, but it was very sweet. It was very syrupy. And on the nose now, again, this has a very distinct grapeness. It's got a sweetness, but the sweetness that I'm smelling on this other MGP product from just the cognac finish is much less syrupy. Now, Armagnac can add extra sweetness. The extra finishing should add extra sweetness, but this should have been finished longer than the good time. So 
Question's kind of up in the air. Once again, I'm absolutely certain this is a 51% MGP rye, barely legal rye, because I know what those smell like. I know what those taste like. I've had those a bunch of times. So I am very confident that they are actually getting MGP for these uh, good times bottlings. What they're doing after that is kind of question marks for me. All right, now let's go ahead and taste the control. The cognac is not showing up nearly as much on the palate. I get a lot of it on the nose. On the palate, it's much more subtle. It doesn't add very much sweetness. It definitely adds some grapiness. It actually adds a little bit of tannic quality as well, which is something I get from a lot of wine finishes. If you were gonna compare this to other MGP bourbons, you would probably say it's a little bit sweeter, definitely more grapey, definitely more earthy in the mid palate. Um, maybe even a little bit uh, more bitter, which is interesting, right? You're getting some more sweetness and some more bitterness with this sort of grape undertone in the mid palate. So now let's compare that to the cigar blend. So again, the effect is very minimal, um, but it's so sweet. <sighs> now this one is a 51% MGP rye. What's really catching me and really concerning me is how sweet these are. They're way more sugary than I would expect from a finished MGP product sitting at 60% alcohol. I, I'm, I don't know, I'm just very skeptical of that. You know, there are so many people that are sourcing MGP right now. The idea that Good Times would be getting these really sweet honey barrels coming out of MGP sitting at four or five years old is just hard for me to believe. I know people, I know companies that are getting literally hundreds or even thousands of MGP barrels around four or five years old, and they're nowhere near this sweet. That is just a fact. Whether or not that is a product of this very unique finishing process that Good Times has going on or something else is hard to say. But that's why I wanted to do this taste test because I've heard these rumors. I have no reason to believe they're true or false. They're just rumors from people that I trust. And so I decided to test them for this video. So what did we learn today? I think it's very clear to me that the MGP nature of these whiskeys stands out, shows up. It's very clear that they are using MGP distillate. It says distilled in Indiana on all the bottlings that I've tasted today. And it's a quality whiskey. There's no question about that. Is it worth $100 plus, which is what I've seen a lot of these selling for? Not in my opinion but that is up to individual consumers. I actually bought one for 130, which I believe to be a huge mistake in my estimation today. But all that said, value has nothing to do with whether or not the whiskey is fraudulently produced. It has nothing to do with whether or not the whiskey is flavored or finished or going through some unique process that no one even knows about. That is a trade secret, which is very possible. But what I know for sure is that the products I've tasted from Good Times, which are finished, are much more sweet and syrupy on the palate than I have gotten from other products of similar age with similar finishes. Whether that means their process is different, their sources for their finished products are different, or they're doing something uncouth is not something I have the information about. So I hope this helps you be an informed consumer and make sure you ask the right questions when buying your whiskey. Like I've said already in this video, I would invite the good people of Whiskey Thief or Three Boys Farms to come talk to me and let's get this sorted out and straightened out for the record. Y'all keep drinking like professionals. I'm going to go finish up my whiskey. Cheers.